there, Editing Avery here, back at you again, because a little birdie just told me that Dr. Louise Linares, who was my professor for ELEC 342, won't be teaching ELEC 342 at least for next year. So, that pretty much invalidates like 75% of this video because all my tips and advice and information is specific to a Linaris class because if you've had Linaris before, you know how different his class is compared to every other ECE prof. As you can see, I'm a little bit disappointed and a little bit mad about this decision because I've spent how many hours working on this video to provide students with information to know what they're gonna get into in these courses and then ECE just throws that all out the window by switching the profs each year, making these videos even less helpful. So thank you. I, this is a message to UBC EC. Thank you very much for this. I really hope you have a pleasant day and I hope both sides of your pillow are warm at night. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery and I've just finished my third year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the nine courses that I took this year, one of these courses was ELEC 342. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience of taking ELEC 342 during term one of the 2024-2025 school year with Professor Louise Linares. And all of the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignment and exam formatting, and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. All right, so what is ELEC 342 all about? In this course, you'll learn all about electromechanical energy conversion and transmission, covering concepts such as magnetic circuits, transformers, three-phase power, DC motors, synchronous generators, and induction motors. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how ELEC 342 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Each week you will have three hours of lectures, where the professor will go through the course content through a mixture of lecture slides and top hat questions. As usual for a Linares class, top hat is used to take attendance and he sometimes does enable location-based tracking to see if you're actually in the building. So warned about that. And just remember that he does take attendance at the beginning and the end of class, so make sure you don't leave too early. Occasionally, he'll also put up some top hat questions in class for you to solve. In your schedule, you'll also see a three hour lab session each week, where you will complete your labs on the first floor of McLeod using three phase power supplies, motors, transformers, and various load boxes to take measurements, perform calculations, and then make your analyses. These labs are done with a partner of your choice, and contrary to what your schedule suggests, you only go to your lab session every two weeks, as you alternate between pre-lab and lab activities each week. I will also say that although you are given three hours for your lab session, most people usually finish it in around two hours or so. In your schedule, you also see a two hour tutorial session, which is used for your midterm exams, of which you will have every three weeks. In terms of assignments, you will have weekly web work assignments to complete. These assignments usually have between six to 20 questions and can take two to 10 hours to complete. They're exactly what you would expect from Linares, so there are no surprises here. And as always for a Linares course, he basically worships the use of the HP Prime, which you will need for this course. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in ELEC 342. In the first couple of weeks, you'll review some concepts from ELEC 202, like AC steady state circuit analysis and three phase circuits. This will help jog your memory on how to use your HP Prime again, as the webwork assignments are the exact same as those used in ELEC 202. You'll then move on to magnetic circuits, which builds on what you've learned in ELEC 211 about magnetic circuits, including how to derive the magnetic field intensity for a cylindrical magnetic circuit. After that, you'll cover single and three phase transformers, learning about how to express the ratio, impedance, power, and clock connection of a three phase transformer, and the open circuit and 
and short circuit tests. He'll then cover DC machines, starting with the fundamentals of how a linear DC machine works before moving into DC motors. You'll learn about the different types of excitations for a DC motor and how to calculate speeds, torques, and currents for a DC motor. Lastly, you'll cover synchronous motors and generators and induction motors, which share similar characteristics and calculations. You'll learn how to draw the equivalent diagram of a synchronous machine, the equivalent circuit for an induction motor, and how to calculate motor torque and slip. That's all that you're gonna learn during the lectures, but I also want to discuss what the labs entail and what each of the labs cover as well. You will have five labs in ELEC 342, which all have a pre-lab and a lab report component to them. For the pre-labs, they'll usually ask you to write down some specific formulas or equations that may help you for the actual lab. During the lab, you will build the circuits that are outlined in the lab outline, take measurements of specific parameters using the computers that are in the lab, save the data, make sure to save the data. You don't want to not have your data and write up the lab report and be like, oh God, we forgot to save the data. Just remember that, and then use that data for the lab report that you need to write afterwards. The lab reports are due one week after completing your lab, and they require you to do some calculations, graph your data in MATLAB or Excel, and then draw some conclusions from your data. Getting into each of the individual labs, for lab one, we were just getting used to using the three-phase power supply and the various load boxes for the first time. So you'll be measuring voltages, currents, phases, and powers for for the circuits. Lab two was covering AC transformers. So you'll be working with transformer boxes and using the open circuit and short circuit tests to calculate all of the parameters of a transformer. Lab three covered brushless DC motors and you'll be doing a bunch of measurements in order to calculate the parameters for the equivalent circuit of the DC motor that you'll be working with. In lab four, we were working with a squirrel cage induction motor and it involved more measurements to calculate the parameters of the equivalent circuit of the induction motor that we were working with. And in lab five, we were supposed to experiment with a car alternator to get familiar with working with synchronous machines. But due to my semester's labs being delayed by a few weeks, this lab ended up being optional for all of us. In terms of the grading scheme and the exams for ELEC 342, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. Your top hat participation is weighted at 10%, your labs are weighted at 15%, your web work assignments are weighted at 10%, your midterms are weighted at 25%, and your final exam is worth 40%. And you do need to pass the lab portion in order to pass the course. As usual for a Linaris course, your midterms and final exams are done on web work, so you know exactly what to expect. The midterms usually have two to three questions on them, and from my experience, there was only one midterm question that was actually new to us. Every other midterm question was ripped straight from the web work assignments. So use that information as you will. For the final exam, I remember there were six questions in total with three of them being from the web work assignments. All right, now into some survival tips advice and miscellaneous things to know before heading into ELEC 342. All I really have to say about this course is that it's a uh, Typical Linaris course. So if you've had Linaris before in either ELEC 201 or 202, you know exactly what to expect in this course and how to prepare for the midterms and the final. Only this time, he's even more predictable. His videos are still insanely helpful for doing the web work assignments, so I would highly recommend watching them if you're stuck on a question or if you just need more clarification on a specific topic. For the labs, I actually would not recommend spending more than two to three hours working on the lab reports after the labs. I actually found that there was an inverse relationship between the amount of time that I spent on the lab report and then the grade that I received. As I remember for the first lab, I think my partner and I, we spent like eight hours on the lab report and then we got a lower score than the report that we spent two hours working on. And since they're only about 3% of your grade each, don't stress too much on them. They're 
honestly just not worth your time and there's other things that you could be spending your time more wisely on. And for those of you who are curious, I scored a 90% in ELEC 342 and the class average was 79%. I'm actually really surprised with how well I did in this course, but it was probably due to how predictable this course really was. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before going into ELEC 342. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so you guys don't have to suffer as much as I did in my third year. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to notify whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.